Hey podcasters, Ryan Otto here. Before today's episode, I just want to let you all know that I've gone all in shortletting on booking.com. Back in 05, the returns were good, but nothing like what we're achieving 14 years later. Because right now, every £1,000 of market rent I used to receive from a tenant is now returning £3,000 per month on the exact same rental property, which is a rental increase of 199%. My friends, if you leave a podcast review and tag me with it on any social platform, I'll send you a free copy of my rent arbitrage model, which is the unlocked for you to do the same. And right now, guys, it's completely free. Hi, everyone. Ryan here. So, There's five main property investment strategies that I'm using in my business right now. Now, the purpose of this podcast is to share those with you guys so you guys can take action, you guys can realign your plans and plan for the summer months or plan for the rest of the year so you can take advantage of the strategies that I'm sharing with you guys in this episode. Or... You may have not heard of any of these strategies, so this may be a fantastic learning curve for you guys where I'm going to reveal some property investment strategies that are responsible for generating the maximum amount of revenue for my company and hopefully yours too, and I'd love to be responsible for sharing that information with you for the first time. So right now we're in May, okay? Now I'm realigning the strategies that I'm using, which are relative for the time of year that we're in, the season that we're in. Does that make sense? Now, it doesn't actually work if you're using outdated strategies in a different market or a different climate, and you're trying to make those strategies work in the market right now, which is a new market. It's an evolving property market. So, Right now, the purpose of this podcast is to share with you guys exactly what I'm doing right now. It's like pulling back the curtain on my business. So you guys, all of you guys listening to this podcast right now, know exactly what I'm doing, where I'm going, the direction I'm focused in and focused on and where I'm spending all of my time or what percentages of my time I'm investing into each and every one of these different five main property investment strategies I'm sharing with you guys now, okay? So, with all that said, right now in May, May to September, let's start with short lets, okay? So when I refer to short lets, I'm referring to service accommodation. Now, that doesn't have to mean that you've bought the property, It doesn't also have to mean that you're just renting the property. It can be buying or it could be renting. So it can be buying the property outright to run as a short let. Or it could also be leasing the property and running it as a short let. I think some of you guys obviously were working with me a long time ago. I mean, short lets, uh, the short letting sites and the short letting model. I've been doing this since around 2005, I think it was, 2005, somewhere around there, 2004, 2005. Now, I called it guaranteed rent back then, okay? Now, I was one of the first companies to actually bring this model to the market, guaranteed rent, or in a commercial way, I mean. The first company to bring it to the market commercially back then in 2005 but not the first company to be offering guaranteed rent. That would be wrong if I said that. And I I want to be um, uh, historically uh, correct here on this podcast. So in the public arena, I was the first person and company to be teaching this model, using this model of guaranteed rent, which is now called rent to rent, I believe. Some people are calling it now. And I'm delighted that my strategy that I was using has, you know, inspired many people, investors, um, other companies, you know, other gurus, which are now gurus, which are using the foundations that um, myself, my company, and we put in place uh, many years ago. 
wow, 14 years ago. So anyway, we're not brand new to this. We've been doing this a very, very long time. Okay, so that's why, obviously, I want you guys to benefit from this as much as you can. So when I refer to service accommodation, I'm talking about the easiest way into service accommodation is renting the property. So renting it from a landlord, renting it from an owner, renting it from anybody who wants their pain taken away, okay? And then running that property as a short let, as serviced accommodation. Now, I don't want you to get that confused with HMO. This is completely different to HMO, okay? I don't enjoy HMO that much, to be fair. I prefer serviced accommodation. And let me explain what I mean by that. Service accommodation is very simple. The customer makes a reservation. They're there for one day, three days, you know, three weeks. It doesn't really matter. There's different expectations that they're looking for. And they're a different caliber of tenant or guest that is just there for a short stay. Okay. Now, you do have a lot more of them, but they're a lot easier to work with. It's much more satisfying. You don't have all the rigmarole, the red tape of the HMO and the, all of the constraints and the legalities that come with it and all of the regulation that comes with HMO. So I have got HMOs, guys. I don't want to be um, putting that down too much. The cash flow is fantastic on the HMOs that I have. As it happens yesterday, I've just submitted a license for another HMO in the Southeast. That cost me, uh, I think it was £950 or £960 when I paid for the licensing fee at the same time as the application to be issued. So I think it's around £950, £960. So that's £1,000 that I've just paid to be licensed in this HMO. Just a little five-bed HMO. Okay. Anyway, so I enjoy HMOs. They're fantastic, the cash flow, but I prefer the modern, sophisticated, clean, clinical, in and out model with less red tape and less constraints, which is serviced accommodation. Okay, guys. So I'm off on the tangent there. <laughs> Very passionate about this topic, as you can see, or as you can hear for you guys uh, listening on the podcast. So May to September. May to September is peak time in our service accommodation business, okay? So right now, I'm focused around 30% of my time on serviced accommodation. Now, what I mean by that is finding more service accommodation properties, in particular areas that work for my business model, okay? So I'm spending 30% of my time talking to sources which are sourcing these deals for my company. Or my own team of people are sourcing deals as well simultaneously in the areas that we're looking to grow, expand, and scale up my uh, service accommodation business in that particular city. Okay, guys? So finding more service accommodation properties. That's why I'm spending 30% of my time on right now because it's the run-up to the peak season where we can make three, four times the amount we make in the low season, or even more than that on some select properties, okay? Not all, some select properties in particular locations. So right now, I'm focusing 30% of my time because it's large amounts of cash flow that these properties bring in. If you've listened to any other episodes of this podcast or you've been on any of the webinars over at theperfectpropertydeal.com, the free training that is, guys, is completely free, then you will see the income statements that we have. You'll see the revenue that we have. You'll see the booking.com cash flow statements and inside our extranet on booking.com. So all of those numbers are there in our extranet on booking.com, which we reveal inside on that free training webinar. So go across there, guys, and have a look for yourself. It's just called perfectpropertydeal.com. It's completely free, and you can obviously visualize and see what I'm talking about right now. So 30% of my time right now is spent on finding more serviced accommodation properties. Now, that's also split between 
offering service accommodation as a management scheme, as a management package. Now, what I mean by that is some of the landlords that we approach, they don't want us to do the service accommodation or they're against us running the property as service accommodation. So what I found is really great and would work for you guys too. You can replicate this and roll this out in the cities that you're in is by offering a second sister service which is a backup to your main service. So in case they say no to one, then you always have the other way that you can make money from this particular lead or this particular meeting or landlord that said no, you can still monetize it in another way. Now let me explain a bit further what I mean by that. If they say no for us, for any reason for us to run the property or service accommodation, now this could be they just don't want to go with us. It could be that they are not happy with service accommodation, or it could be many other factors. It could even be the case that it just doesn't work for them for any particular reason. So when that happens, we use a second approach to contact or to communicate our offer with the landlord or with the owner. Now, that would be something along the lines of if they don't want to instruct us to do it, how about if we managed it for them as a high cash flowing serviced accommodation property, apartment or holiday home? So if you imagine or you may be thinking, well, if they say no to you, why would they want to do it themselves? Now, the answer to that is very simple. They may have not known about it until you approach them or till you float the idea till we walk through the door and offer that service to them they may not be aware of it at all so let's say they've decided on that basis that it doesn't work for them now they're aware of it for the first time and now it's on their mind because you've spent half an hour or an hour with this landlord or owner discussing how you want to turn the property into a service accommodation, running it as a small hotel, as a very simplified example, okay? Now, they'll do a little bit of research, they'll look on the internet, they'll do a bit of Googling, they'll look at some other numbers, they may have heard someone else talking about something else about service accommodation, and then they start to do some research. Now, it's on their mind, okay? It's like when... When you haven't been seeing this vehicle on the road at all, hardly ever, and now it's in your mind because you've been on Auto Trader every night, you know, an hour a night for the last week, looking at the next new car that you want to get, and you've found the make, the model that you want, so now it's on your mind, and everywhere you go and walking down the road or driving, you see that car everywhere. Does that make sense? Okay. So that means that now it's on their mind. So now they're looking into this because you've planted the seed like inception. You've given them that idea. And when our second offer comes through to the landlords or the owner saying, well, hold on a minute. We understand you didn't go ahead with leasing the property to us long term so we can turn it into a high end corporate let property and run it as a service department or a holiday home, okay? Now, how about if we give you all of the tools, all of the resources, all of the help, everything that you need, and then we manage it for you or we share the profit with you? How does that sound? So this, guys, is where we're spending 30% of our time right now trying to acquire as many more suitable flats, houses, apartments, etc., high-rise apartments, whatever works for our model in the cities we're in right now because it's a summer season. So 30% of our time is spent there finding the deals to run a service accommodation. The ones that don't work, we're offering management or a joint venture, some kind of management stroke partner scheme with that owner with that landlord or you know whoever owns or is in control of that particular property 
So right now, that is where I'm spending 30% of my time right now in May 2019. And that's all the way through to around September this year, 2019. Okay, guys? Now, I hope you got some value from this episode. I would love to hear your thoughts on this episode. Hey, podcasters, thanks for listening. Please go ahead and share the podcast with your friends. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe so I can instantly deliver my best business tactics and entrepreneurial content to you the second it's released. Does that sound like a good deal?